Good evening, folks. Uh, welcome to uh, the June 25th, 2019 meeting of the Cape Elizabeth Zoning Board of Appeals. I'll call the meeting to order and we'll proceed right into the business of the meeting and we'll lead off first by uh, seeking approval of the minutes from the April 23rd, 2019 meeting. And uh, I've reviewed the minutes. They look like they're generally in, 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 uh, specifically in keeping with what we talked about um, on that evening. Uh, are there any suggestions for, for friendly amendments? And if there are not, I would seek a motion to approve the minutes of the April 23rd, 2019 meeting. So moved. Second. Moved by Michael, seconded by Aaron. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? It's unanimous. Uh, on to old business, of which we have none, so we'll move promptly into new business. Uh, item one is to hear the request of Patty and Reed Gramsci. Yes. Is that right? Gramsci? Great. Owners of the property at 12 Connor Lane, Matthew 14, lot 32, for a variance to allow their house to expand an additional 5% in the RP1 buffer based on section 19-4-5.a.5 of the zoning ordinance. And before we launch into your application, I'll ask our um, code enforcement officer to give us a, a brief synopsis of the, sure. of the application and the issues. Several months ago, Mr. Gramsci came in to talk to me uh, in order. His, his wish was to obviously connect his garage to his house. Uh, he has an awkward lot because on, on one side of the lot is the ocean and on the other side of the lot is an RP1 wetland. Both have different zones. This application, although it is uh, a variance in the shoreland overlay, it, it, it has no bearing on the shoreland overlay. The whole project is outside of the shoreland overlay. Uh, I've reached out to the DEP and made them aware of the situation. They're, they're fine with the application going through as a shoreland variance uh, because it's actually a variance to the resource protection standards, not the shoreland overlay standards. So it's very confusing lot from a zoning perspective. Uh, several years ago, uh, 12, 15 years ago, Mr. Gramsci expanded the house the 25% that the code officer is allowed to permit in the resource protection zone. And uh, now as uh, Mr. and Mrs. Gramsci age a bit, they've had some issues getting from the garage to the house in the winter and uh, so they're, they're hoping to be able to have a, a weather tight connection. And that's it. Okay. okay. Uh, Mr. Chair, before we proceed, um, I just want to bring to the board's attention that I actually represented a party that was involved in a lawsuit with, with the Gramsies that I withdrew from over a year ago, but it has no bearing on this, uh, this at all. And I feel comfortable going forward. Very good. Any other comments before we move, move into a presentation by the applicants? All right. I would invite the, uh, the Gramsies to take the podium and Good. Thank you for that summary. summary. I'll amplify that just a little bit. Okay. And I will point out it was more than 30 years ago that we made those changes. Oh, okay. So that, that's like most of the things I say a few years ago, it's usually twice as well. Yeah. Time, time flies. Time yeah. flies. Yeah. When you're having, especially when you're having fun, like I'm sure Ben does. <laughs> <laughs> uh, good evening. Uh, my wife and I and our architect, uh, John Whipple, who's with us, uh, are here hoping to add 140 square foot addition to our home. Our goal is to have a covered walkway from the house to the garage, which is separate from the house and elevated from the house. Um, our, and, and as Ben mentioned, our, our, our home is unique, and, and I have to admit that the zoning ordinances caused me considerable confusion 
and uh, subsequently, that's my excuse for the mistakes I have on page seven of my application, and I'll try to correct those right now. And if you look at page seven, it should look something like this if I number them correctly. And in the middle there, there's uh, five lines. And if you go down the third line, it says that total non-conforming expansion allowed is 30%. That should be 40%. I think that's crossed out in some of your applications. The next line, uh, to bring this in line with line three, says that the remaining allowable non-conformity is 5.7%. That should be 17, I'm sorry, 15.7%. In other words, the addition that we did 30 years ago used 24% and 24 and 17, or correction, 24 and 15 is roughly 40%, which is allowable. In our particular instance, a 15% uh, um, increase would equal 403 square feet. We're only asking for 120 square feet. If, hopefully that makes sense. And, and Mr. Gramsci, just, just to your point, um, the application that I see that, that, that the board would act upon references the uh, total non-conforming expansion allowed of 40%. There was a correction there. And the remaining allowable non-conformity of 15.8%. 7%. So the application does reflect those changes and that's what we would act upon. So there are no, there are no concerns okay. within any errors there. I, it, okay. Unless, to, unless uh, other board members raise issues, it looks as though we have a complete application that, that does reflect those numbers. Oh, good. And the addition was 120 or 140 square feet? The, and the addition is 120 or 140 square feet? Okay. And, and you can carry on. I'm sorry to interrupt, but okay, I just no, want, no, wanted no. to make that clear. Um, my wife and I really love where we live. We feel we're fortunate to live there. We feel our kids were fortunate to go through Cape schools. And the changes that we propose would make it more likely that we'll be able to continue to live where we do as we continue to age. Matt mentioned that actually uh, that we had sometime in the past we had undergone a revision. Actually, here in my notes say it was 25 years ago, not 30 years ago. 25 years ago, we were able to modify our home, but at that time, we were unable to connect the house to the garage because the ordinance at that time only allowed a 25% change. The ordinance now <coughs> is somewhat less restrictive and we'd now like to address a long-term problem of wintertime access to the garage. We've had problems in the winter because the prevailing winds pile the snow on the stairs to the garage, making the garage steps either snowy or icy and uh, make the trip to the garage kind of a dangerous challenge. As I've tried to show on pages five, seven, and eight, as Ben mentioned, the garage is outside the shoreland and the wetland zone. On page seven, I hope we can note that all changes are between the house and the garage and outside the shoreland zone. I brought a blow up basically of the pictures that you have kind of explain this confusing stuff. This is, this picture is the current entrance to the house, and this is from you taken over here. You can see the stairway in question here and here. Our proposal basically is to change the orientation of the stairway to direct it directly toward the house, cover the stairway, and enclose the front porch. This takes up the 140 square feet. Um, these two pictures, or, or drawings, show the, uh, the this is really better than your pictures. These two pictures will show the proposed addition. Basically, uh, a covered stairway here and 
although this looks very much identical, this is the enclosed. <coughs> I'm, I'm just going to ask you to step back to the mic yeah. uh, because we, I believe that we actually have photos of this, and, and I'm fine with you continuing, continuing with your explanation, but for purposes of those who may be watching at home and or record-keeping purposes, we just okay. need you at the mic. Okay. Thank you. Um, let see, where was it? So basically, we would enclose the front porch and enclose the stairway, giving a sheltered access to the garage. Very good. And, and uh, just, uh, again, for the record, uh, we appreciate the, 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 uh, the illustrative illustrative aid because that is helpful um, and I believe that as part of the application we do have a uh, good deal of these uh, depictions portrayed yeah. and I think they're at uh, page six of the application yeah, yeah. okay thank you <clears throat> uh, we feel that these changes are relatively small on the, on the whole scope of things but they would make a big difference to us they do not affect any of our neighbors' site views. Uh, and these changes would bring the value of our home up to the value of the neighborhood standard by allowing safer, sheltered garage access. So I know this is kind of complicated, and John uh, Whipple and I will do our best to answer any your questions. Thank you very much. Any, any further presentation um, from the Gramsies, from the applicant? Okay. Um, uh, ben, what, what did we receive in the way of any uh, public comment via email or phone or anything else? I, I did not receive any formal comment on it. Okay. I would ask that uh, anybody else uh, come forward who wishes to speak uh, on the application. My name is Richard Berman. I live at 58 Hannaford Cove Road uh, down in that area. Um, I'm retired now, but I used to be a landscape architect for 19 years, and I was a developer for 30 years. So. I know something about setbacks and wetlands and the impacts and so forth and so on that you're looking at. I'm very much in support of this variance for three main reasons, and I'll be short, but the first one is um, it has a positive impact, actually, on the environment. I know uh, uh, Reed didn't really s stress it, but there's going to be less impervious surface after this project because he's taking some brick walkway, I believe, and turning it into garden. And so there's actually going to be less impervious surface, and that's good for wetlands, as you know, so forth and so on. And as was mentioned, it's not in the, the work, small work that's to be done isn't in the shoreline setback, it isn't in the wetland um, setback either. So it's going to be a positive environmental impact. The other thing is aging in place. I know Cape Elizabeth is starting to do a lot of things, uh, community uh, planning and different things about aging in place. We do have an aging community. And uh, I mean, <laughs> I'm having a hip replacement. I might come back here and make some changes to my house. And we're all in the same place. But uh, we, I do hope Cape Elizabeth will take that into consideration as a town, as, as a as different boys look at these issues of aging in place and, and be helpful in that regard. The other, um, and the third reason is uh, this couple really is the heart of our community down there, our neighborhood. Um, Reed is the un <laughs> unofficial harbor master that takes care of Staples Coves, makes sure uh, the things are going right and if there's rowdy parties, breaks them up, stuff like that. Patty keeps all those illegal parkers out of there and all those people with dogs picking up the poop. So they really do benefit the neighborhood and they really are the heart of the neighborhood and I would hate to see them have to leave because they couldn't age in place. Um, that's all I've really got to uh, say. So I support this. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Berman. Any additional comments?
All right, uh, hearing none, we will close the public portion of the hearing. Uh, it occurs to me that we should, uh, we will need to have an opportunity, of course, to, to uh, post questions to the applicant. So Mr. Gramsci, we may in fact call you back up for, for some questions before we actually begin our deliberations. They probably should have led off of that. Um, and I would open it up to the, to the board for uh, questions and comment. I guess I would lead. I would lead off with um, a question or a comment for our code enforcement officer for Ben McDougal. It seems a, a little odd that we're in the uh, position of dealing with a, a variance request on this particular property, but I think there was an explanation for that based upon the sort of the plain language of the ordinance. Sure. The well, the plain language of the ordinance. <clears throat> allows the code officer to approve a 25% expansion. And then there's the, let's see. There's the section at the end of the resource protection 1945A5 that specifically allows uh, someone to go from 25% up to a 40% expansion uh, with a variance from this board. Because part of this lot is in the shoreland zone, there's a higher threshold for a variance approval. So, so not so much the expansion that we're talking about, the actual, if, if the property is within the shoreland zone, not the expansion, but if the property itself is within the shoreland zone, then the variance standard applies. Yes, the, okay. the, uh, the heightened variance standard sure. applies bec because part of this parcel is in the shoreland zone. No, no part of the project is occurring in the shoreland zone. One other thing I could point out, and I don't know if the board will choose to go down this path, but there is uh, some leniency in the zoning ordinance uh, to make a house accessible if someone has a disability. And I'm not saying that these folks do or don't have a disability, but when Mr. Gramsci came in, he told me, you know, since I've been aging, it's harder to get from the garage to the house. We don't define disability in our ordinance. Webster's has a pretty liberal definition of, of what a disability is, so I just thought I'd point that out. What, what section is that? That is 1952B. Uh, to final paragraph, page Questions for um, the applicant and or our code enforcement officer before we move into deliberation. I've got a question and usually I like to be a little more read up on and, and understand the application a little better, but this one is quite confusing, so that, that's why we're bouncing these questions off Ben here. Um, the section that you referenced, 19-4-5.A5, variances um, in the RP district. The way I read that <coughs> is if an expansion of an existing main building is proposed which exceeds the above restrictions, which it does because the above restrictions are 25%, 
and is not located in the Resource Protection 1 critical wetland, the Zoning Board of Appeals may grant a variance. So, so this, do you read that as the, the actual expansion is located in the wetland or in the wetland buffer? In the wetland itself. Okay, which clearly this isn't because we're, we're nearly 100 feet away. Okay, yeah. that's a, thank you. No, I'm, I'm sure. understanding this application a little it, better it as we yeah. talk through this. I'm year. sorry, Mike, where, where are you in the? So I'm, I'm in the section that we're reviewing this under that allows us to grant this variance for up to 40%. So it's 19-4-5.A5, okay. yep. Seems as though we're probably in, in, in the uh, discussion mode, unless you have additional questions, Michael. All right. Okay, so we will we'll close the, uh, the the public comment and question period, and we'll move forward then just with the board discussion. And uh, I have to say that. I struggle with this application because it, when you look at it, it, it seems it seems right, uh, and and it, it's it's kind of fits into that test of well you know you know when you see it like this makes some sense, particularly given given um, life circumstances, the uh, the scenario with the property, but. We, as the zoning board, are tasked with interpreting and enforcing the actual ordinance. We're, we're not lawmakers. We are not the we're not the town council. We don't get to decide what, if anything, the ordinance should, should say. And so, when I look to the standard for variances, it's very strict. And I've, I've run into this frequently. Um, it's a buzzsaw that I've run into with my own law practice, and that is really neither here nor there tonight. But I have a, a very good understanding of how the variance standard works. And I understand that, you know, there are four criteria. Um, and, and I'll, I'll list the ones that I think we, we, we satisfy, that the application satisfies. The need for a variance is to the, to the unique circumstances of the property and not to the general conditions of the neighborhood. And I understand that the property went into wetland protection. Um, my understanding is that after the applicants purchased that. So I'm you know thinking that that's not, not particularly problematic uh, from a board standpoint. Uh, the granting of the variance would not alter the essential character of the neighborhood. Well, of course it would not. Um, the hardship is not the result of action taken by the applicant or prior owner. Um, you know, it's a, it's, that, that, that could be subject to some interpretation, but again, I think we could could uh, blame that on the on the change in in, um, in the wetland designation. But what I really struggle with is the first prong, which is the land in question cannot yield a reasonable return unless a variance is granted. And again, this, these are standards that are not only adopted in, in town ordinance, but they're also adopted in state law. Uh, this is what the legislature has said the standard should be, and, and, and Cape Elizabeth has, has adopted that um, as their own as well. And I have a hard time reaching a conclusion that the property cannot yield a reasonable return unless there is a, an interior uh, entry from the home to the garage. So that, that's what I'm 
that's what I'm struggling with myself. Uh, and I, I, you know, obviously, uh, the board members, I'd like to hear your, your thoughts on that. Yeah, I'll, I'll hop in. I, I just, I completely agree. I was going to bring up the same point. It, and it, it, this is always the most difficult standard to meet for a variance. We very rarely grant variances. Um, it, I mean, I think it's a very hard argument to say that the, this, this land uh, cannot yield a reasonable return unless we grant this variance. Um, of course, it's a project that makes complete sense. <laughs> uh, everyone is sort of in favor of it, uh, 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 you know, on its merits. But, um, but, but yeah, in, in order to uh, to meet to, to cause an undue hardship, we, we really need to find that the land can't yield a reasonable return, which is which is very difficult. I'm. Sort of reading through the the section on uh, disability right now to see if if that makes a little more sense um, or allows us to approve what's proposed. You know, I think typically that's probably to allow a ramp to encroach into a setback or something like that. Um, where there was previously a set of stairs or something, uh, or in addition to a set of stairs, but um, I'd like I'm, I'm going to I'm going to read this a little more closely while we're while we're still talking here. And that was I, I flipped away from that. Um, that is 19.5.2 b two. And change, uh, so to speak. It's on page. It's, it's it's the last section of, of sub B, um, and I, I I too reviewed that, and, and my interpretation that that as well is that that is really intended for you know strict means of ingress and egress toward the home in the advance of a specific disability, and, and in fact the provision says. Um, that, that any variance granted, the board shall restrict any variance granted for the purpose of making that dwelling accessible to an African with a disability who's living in the dwelling solely to the installation of equipment or the construction of structures necessary for access to or egress from the dwelling by the applicant with a disability. Uh, it, it seems as though it's, this is a uh, Pretty narrowly, a uh, pretty narrowly drafted provision that that I'm not convinced applies. It would have to be a finding of, of undue hardship <coughs> to access the property. So, uh, you know, I suppose it's a point for discussion. But my reaction was that it it's probably doesn't apply in this case. But yes. First, I'll apologize if I stumble. It's been a very long night. Um, I'm very familiar with this area, and for what it's worth, um, I'm struggling with the same too. Uh, I would add, though, that a wind out of that east would certainly knock an elderly person over. If there, I don't think there's a tree between that and the ocean. So, just adding that. And that's fair, and, and you know, I'm, I'm, I'm going to launch off into a tangent that I probably shouldn't launch, launch off into, but uh, my wife is from Atlanta, Georgia, and we were discussing this a little bit, and she said, well, any garage in coastal Cape Elizabeth should be connected to the home, and if it can't be, it's it would be hard to yield a reasonable return. That was her opinion, and and my my and that was just an offhanded conversation. And I understand, you know, how tough the, the climate can be up here and how difficult these sorts of things can be. But the bottom line is, if we started, the the variance standard is so strict that, in my opinion, we can't be basing variance grants 
on whether or not you can have ingress or egress in or out of your garage via via some sort of cover or enclosure. Um, just again, based on the, the plain language of both the ordinance and the statute. Um, if, if the language were different in the ordinance, if the language were different in the statute, this is the sort of thing that I would, I would want to want to grant, but we, we again are constrained and constricted by by the law as written. Aaron. So if basically we're, our issue here is that, that it's the, the amount of square footage that we're that they'd like to increase because it triggers the variance or need for variance. And if they basically just did a relocation of the garage, it wouldn't be as much of an issue. So it's be, the thing that's triggering is because they're trying to add the 140 square feet. But if they connected the garage and the house without adding square footage, that would be allowed. It's obviously a different kind of project. They but moved the garage right. next to the house. Well, the, there's still the 100 foot setback that would prevent that. Okay. Can I make a point? The, the, the sentence you read about the board shall restrict any variance granted uh, for the purpose of making that property accessible to an applicant with a disability who's living on the property solely for the installation of equipment or the construction of structures necessary for ingress and egress for the property. I mean, this is only a walkway. I mean, the only thing that's being built is a walkway for egress and ingress from the house. So, so I do think it, I mean, you could say it complies with that sentence. And I would say that, that there, uh, an applicant come before the board with a similar project and say, I'd like to build a ramp from the garage to the house, and then they'd like to put walls around it, like a screen, you know, some sort of structure to shelter them from the elements as they're going up the ramp. So I think I'm in agreement with everybody that that uh, that we really wouldn't be able to prove under 1945A.5 because of that uh, the first prong there. But I think we'd, or we could make a good argument or that we that we could approve under the disability section. instance of that property. And also uh, sp perhaps specific to the site it's at with the That's access correct. to the, uh, I'm the wind. probably gets frozen salt spray. As much as I'd like to stretch the, the plain language of the ordinance, I haven't heard any evidence of disability. I've, I've heard about aging in place and I understand that. But this is specifically limited to an applicant with a disability, again, by virtue of the plain language of the ordinance.
I just want to just make a point here, and that this structure was allowed to be expanded 25 years ago or, or, or whenever it was up to 25%, not through the granting of a variance, which we've, I think we've clearly stated is, is a really high bar to clear, but, but that, that expansion was allowed just under the uh, under allowable um, expansion language in the ordinance. Um, unfortunately, I, I I agree with you, Mike. I, I think it's a hard one, but um, I, I don't see how this uh, falls under that disability um, provision. I don't like it, but my 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 job, and I view it a collective job as a board, is to uphold the provisions of the ordinance and the provisions of state law. Um, and so I'll just float, um, um, and, and we'll see whether we have a, a taker on this um, for, for purposes of discussion. A, um, Just to complete my, my thought here, the, the, the motion that I would float for discussion purposes is that I want somebody to make the motion since I'm, I'm sitting here acting as chair tonight, is to deny the request of Patty and Reed Gramsey, owners of the property at 12 Connor Lane Map U14, Lot 32, for a variance to connect their garage to their house. Um, public comment has been closed. I'm sorry, I'm not aware of your interest in the property. Um, I'm the architect, and I may have to this event Very good. The public comment has been closed, so you've had your opportunity to, to speak and present. Um, Can I ask if I'm going to have a chance to make a comment? I, I'm, I'm sorry. If, if, if you are going to speak, it, it, it needs to be at the, at the mic, and we haven't actually voted on anything yet. Um, so we're, we'll carry forward with our deliberations, and, and I'm sorry, but that's, that's why we give everybody an opportunity to comment and answer questions uh, at the, in the earlier portion of the hearing. Um, so that that's the that is the possible motion. And I'll leave it to, to uh, other board members to determine whether they want to make that motion. So moved. I'll, I'll make it just okay to move this forward. Sure. And, and do we have a second? A second. All right. Um, discussion. I mean, I think we've, di we've I think we've discussed the, the issue um, pretty fully, but certainly any other thoughts or comments are, of course, welcome from the board on this issue. to deny the request as stated. All opposed? All right, it's 3-1, so the, the motion carries. Uh, we'll move into uh, findings of fact. Um, proposed finding one, 12 Cunner Lane is a non-conforming lot in the RA district. This lot is also in the RP1 district, and the house is a non-conforming structure as it relates to the RP1 district. Proposed finding of fact two, a portion of the lot is in the Shoreland Overlay District, but no part of the proposed project occurs within the Shoreland Overlay District. Proposed finding of fact three, this house was expanded by 25% already, and now the applicant would like to expand the house by an additional 5%. Zoning Ordinance Section 19-4-5.A.5 allows up to a 40% expansion if a variance is granted. Um, and we probably, I'm thinking we probably should propose an additional proposed finding of fact, which is that pursuant to Section 19-5-2,
the two, the board concludes that the exception for an applicant with a disability does not here apply, just because we had some discussion about that. Uh, comments on the proposed findings of fact as, as I just read them. Could, uh, could you repeat the final, the added one? Pursuant to 19, uh, that the uh, board concludes that the disability exception set forth within ordinance section 19 5 2 B 2 does not here apply. Do we want to say apply or does not meet? We can, we can, we can, yeah. We can go, we'll go, we'll go one way or the other. That we, we, that's that's a, a fine point. We can say that the criteria are not are not met. That's better. Yeah. Any further comments, thoughts? With that, I would. Um, solicit a motion to approve the proposed findings of fact. What are you doing with the additional findings? Oh, yeah, okay, yeah, I should, I should get to those as well. Okay. Let, 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 let's start with the... Do we need, do we need, do to, we need to make findings on this? We, I think we do, I think we do. I, yeah, because I that think goes, you, you should at least find that one of them the doesn't... one does not. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah, no, that's a good point, because that goes to the heart of the, of the variance issue. Um, so then we can address the proposed additional findings of fact. One, the land in question um, can yield a reasonable return unless, um, can yield a reasonable return regardless of whether a variance is granted. And I think that's really all we need to address. So um, I just referenced the proposed findings of fact uh, with one addition, uh, as noted on the record, uh, with one proposed additional finding of fact. Uh, is, is there a motion? I move to approve the findings of fact and additional findings of fact as read into the record. Moved by Michael, do we have a second? I'll second it. Okay. Second by Colin. Uh, any further discussion? All, right. All in favor? It's unanimous. Uh, again, folks, th this is a tough one. Um, I'm sorry, we've just concluded the application. I, I would I would urge you this is uh this is, is say I'm disappointed is understatement. This is intended to see how you guys sleep at night. This is intended to be a cooperative endeavor. We are volunteers of the town. A cooperative endeavor will let everybody have a chance to speak. You've had your chance to speak for reasons that I think are spurious, and I have a lot of reasons why they're spurious, but you're not going to listen to those. You are out of order. Well, I'm just asking for a chance to speak. You you spoke already. Who break your hip this winter and slip on the back of your steer to be compatible with a disability? I have medical reasons for disability. Are you interested in listening to those? We will move on to the next application.
We'll move on to hear the request of Stephen Tisopoulos. Sopoulos. Okay, there we go. Owner of the property at 21 Ocean Avenue, map U17, lot 34A, to replace and relocate a single family dwelling based on section 19-4-3B2 of the zoning ordinance. First, ask for for uh, Mr. McDougall's input on the on the application. Uh, I've been working with Mr. Sopolis for a year or two now on the reconstruction of his house. He, he actually has he has two lots and two houses, and he's combining the lots and building one house in place of two uh, legally non-conforming houses. In the original plan, he was he was going to be able to complete this without coming to the zoning board. Uh, he's going to be able to build on existing footprint, on grandfathered, non-conforming footprint, and then subsequent to getting his plans drafted, uh, a neighbor's addition uh, was. Put, put in a place that's caused Mr. Sopolis to want to adjust his house a little bit. So he's doing I exactly what he was going to be able to do with a simple building permit from me, but he just wants to slide back, uh, is it eight feet? Five, five, he just wants to slide back on the lot five feet, which, uh, which just takes him off of his non-conforming footprint. So it, it's definitely a little, a little more straightforward from a zoning perspective, uh, trying to uh, capture the, the view and sighting that he went to this architect to obtain, uh, and subsequently he realizes he needs to slide the footprint five feet back. Feel free to approach the podium and, and explain your application. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I'll try to talk over them. Um, thank you. Good evening. Um, I will spare you the long dissertation. <laughs> of what I prepared. I did find a correction last night and I apologize for that. I am asking, that's down at the bottom of the first page, um, I ask, am asking to move the house to the north, not the west. Um, so as uh, Ben mentioned, um, we, uh, let me just start here. So we had two homes, 21 and 23 Ocean Avenue, both park properties for as long as we've owned them since the late 80s have been independent. They had separate utilities, septic systems, two separate titles. Um, Mr. Sopolis, let's we're going to take just a five minute break. Sure. And we'll, let's circle sure, back. Sure, sure. Thank you. Gladly. Thank you.
Stephen, please, I'm, I'm sorry. Please, we, we, we rudely interrupted the, the commencement of your presentation on your application, and uh, my apologies for that. Please, please uh, approach the podium and, and continue. Thank you very much. You're Thank welcome. you. Um, again, my name is Stephen Gregory. I go by Greg, Greg Sopolis. I own 21 and 23 Ocean Avenue. It's, a, it's been a family residence for since the late 80s. Um, both properties were separately held, separate titles, separate utilities, separate, um, they were two individual separate lots. Um, both in the RA, I guess you call them non-conforming lots. Um, in 1991, number 23, which was my parents' house at the time, uh, was renovated and expanded with the purpose of uh, moving them up here. Uh, they actually, my mother grew up in Cape Elizabeth, so it was great to pre be able to bring her back to where she, her roots, if you will. They got a few years out of the house, it was great, um, but they passed. So we've been using the house for about 20 years, my sister and I, the two houses, um, until I decided I wanted to live up here and I moved up here about a year and a half ago. Um, I hired an architect, I'm sorry, I hired a surveyor to, um, to redo the plot plan with the purpose and the intent to combine the two lots into one and I did that. Um, I have um, contracted a uh, architect to help me design a property uh, that conformed with the new, with the setbacks um, on the lot. And it, we also went ahead and got the septic system designed to make sure that we complied with that and we worked with uh, Ben on that. Um, so we officially merged the lots in April of this year into one. And then we proceeded, we designed, as Mr. Uh, as Ben mentioned, we proceeded with the design, finished the design, even finished all the construction drawings, and we were all ready to submit these construction plans with the intent to start building this May. And over the winter, uh, my neighbor to the east did put on quite a substantial addition that blocked some view. So what we're propose or what we're requesting is to move the same footprint back five feet. Um, and as my application states, the overall coverage of the new construction, um, the, the setback reduces from um, the front setbacks go from 23 to 20 feet. The side setbacks go from 21.5 feet to 20, 21.5 to uh, 25.5 feet. The other side is 22 to down to 36 feet. And the rear setback goes from 5.5 to 8 feet. So I am technically getting away from all my neighbors and improving the non-conformity. Is that the right term? Um, the current lot coverage is 24.63% and 440.17 square feet of that is non-conforming to the setbacks. The proposed structure is 24.58% with only 375 feet of non-conforming to the setbacks. So we're, we're improving the situation, I guess, as far as the non-conformance. And we're also putting the new home more favorably, in a more favorable position in relationship to the septic system by moving it back a little bit. Um, again, the lot is very, it's a shallow, even combining it, it's a trapezoidal, odd-shaped lot. A, and the cottage is um, situated on it in such a way that just to combine the two properties didn't really make sense. And we really did look at just renovating and trying to build one, you know, kind of combining the two uh, structures, but then it just, all the contractors said, it's just not worth it, just knock them down and start over. So, um, let's see, what else can I say? Um, 
I know it may, may not be relevant to the whole subject, but what my current setbacks are to my, from my neighbors uh, to, my, to my properties are um, 20 feet on the, to the south, to the Strazerios, even though they just put on the addition, it still is 20 feet. Um, uh, to the western boundary, Cynthia Doucette, who is sitting here with us tonight, she's 20 feet. Um, across the street, Diane Eldridge, she's 20 feet from the front. Uh, of course, it is across the street. But the house directly to the west of me is, uh, is barely six feet <laughs> from my property line. So I'm going to be 36 feet away from them, uh, from him. So I'm really increasing the distance. No, 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 we're talking about um, Ken. Um. So I am increasing the overall distance right, right now. I'm about 24 feet from his property and I'm increasing it to 36. If you look at the overlay, the colored overlay I did include there. So you can see there the, the actual boundaries. This probably is the one pictorial that tells, that says it all. Uh, you can see the overall property boundary, and the dotted line is the setback to each one of the um, north, south, east, and west. The red color are the two existing structures. The, I think it's purple. <laughs> I think it's purple. I, I, I did each one of yours separately, so I, I believe it's purple. Shows the new proposed home, and we are moving basically to the north, which is, if, as you're looking at it, to the right, five feet. So the um, front wall purple goes back five feet. Is that clear? Is it, is it clearly de de depicted? I'm sorry I couldn't blow it up. Um, the overall footprint is considerably smaller if you look at, especially the structure to the right, we're much smaller than, than the existing. And, um, right, so, so, so the, the, the purple you referenced, that's the, uh, the sort of the, the horizontal, uh, I'm sorry, the diagonal purple yes, the, lines. Yes, the hash lines, that's correct. The hash lines, okay. So the hash line is the new proposed home right. coverage, and, if, and the two red are the existing two homes. So you can see that there, it's considerably smaller. And the connecting between the two is really this bridge right here. Um, we did get, uh, I don't know, you may ask the question or may not, we did get support from the neighbors. I know a couple of the neighbors sent Ben um, their support in emails. And I brought another one from my neighbor across the street to Ben today. She, I met with each one of my neighbors and I met with Cindy Dusat as well. Um, I guess I could just add, it's been a 30 year dream of mine. <laughs> I can honestly say that. I've lived in the cottage for years. And I, 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 I can't tell you how much I love this place. And uh, to finally get up here and live here and fulfill this dream um, is, is extraordinary for me. Uh, very excited about being here. Um, we're, we, I just, it, it's kind of irrelevant, but we just buried all the power lines in front of us. And uh, that was done just as an improvement to the neighborhood. I took on that project as well. So it's kind of separate, but any questions of me? There may well be, uh, you, you can stay, stay okay. put right where you are, Great. that's fine. Thank you. And uh, we'll ask Ben to um, reference any submissions that, Great. that Thank you receive from the public. Sure, two neighbors sent me emails in support of the project. And then we received this one this evening. Uh, from another neighbor uh, at 24 Ocean Avenue supporting the project. I didn't receive any other comments. Okay. Um, questions for the applicant before we move on to public comment? I 
have some. Is it okay? Please. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, I'm going to start with your colored overlay. Sure. Who did that? Did you do that? Or? Uh, my architect provided it. I colored it because okay. he didn't have. Um, it, it, when I asked him for it, he was in. He has an office down at Kennet Bunk in Portland, and one doesn't have the facility, so he, he sent it to me. I colored it. So the, the, the structures were put there. They're come, they come from the surveyors. I'm just trying to determine its accuracy. They they do. They're right off the survey, and um, I. I have a copy of the survey. Yeah, it's in here. It's fine. I Is just it? that was one of my questions, and then. Oh yes, I'm sorry. Right. The, these pictures are really helpful, actually, with the one where you have partial construction and it's blocking your views. Yeah. I'm confused as to where that structure is relative to your your. That block. is directly in front. So if you, this this is the large. Yep. This is the house. So this, um, if you could see this. That's the building then. Adjacent to that. Okay. So it's just on the other side of, of, of that. They put a new addition on. But it's attached to that structure. It's this neighbor directly to the south, I think? Correct. All right. Correct. All right. I think that's all I have. Yeah. And so just to clarify, on that photograph with the, the Jeep in the front of the gray house, the gray house is one of the subject one of your is one of your properties is it, your property the, the gray house here is your is your current yes, house actually both okay. the gray and the cottage adjacent to it so okay well in this photo you, there's just the if one you look at these these two okay oh, all right oh. and i'll pose a question as i understand from the application from what you presented correct me if i'm wrong was that you don't necessarily need to proceed with the application. Um, you don't necessarily need to obtain the, these concessions, but for your concerns with the view, is that right? Um, yes, that is correct. And it, we could build on the existing grandfathered footprint, as I understand. That's the design we originally had, but we've decided, we've asked if we could shift this five feet this way, just for that purpose. But again, in doing that, we're still reducing our over overall um, nonconformity. I think you also mentioned that by doing so help uh, helped accommodate the septic system placement yes we get we get five feet away further away from the septic system okay. the existing or the new design of the septic system it actually had um cindy over at the house this afternoon and we think that she's going to get a slice of the ocean view from the east side if we pull this back a little bit as well so well, yeah, actually that... improve her view so the the septic would be in the same place. You would just the structure would be closer yeah, if you hadn't moved. Exactly. Okay. Yes. And I, I was going to ask about if you were going to block other views, but, but I'll take the absence of comment on that as the answer. Uh, and the, the, the supporting neighbors. Um, I actually met with the house with these people yesterday, and he has nothing. I mean, basically, he's improved his his. Um, his view doesn't get hindered at all. Okay. Thank you. Any further questions for the applicant? Hearing none, any further comments? We, we would we'd reserve the right, of course, to pose additional I'm just questions. Sort of, I'm thinking hard if there's anything else I have to ask. Um, I believe that's it. I believe. Um, no, I've covered everything. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Um, our code enforcement officer, Ben McDougall, did already reference some submissions that were received from the from the public. Uh, is there anybody here this evening who would like to speak further? Please step right up to the podium. Thank you. And just please identify yourself. 
I'm Cynthia Doucette. I live at 43 Richmond Terrace. So our, we have a long property line in common. Um, I'm to the west of Greg. And I've talked with him a couple different times. I have a pretty good understanding of what he plans to do. But my primary concern is the rear setbacks. Um, years ago, when they uh, built the house for his parents, I recall that it, uh, there was a variance for a 10-foot setback to the property line. And now I'm confused tonight, Greg, by you said there was a five and a half to an eight foot something setbacks. It, I'll, I'll just ask you to hold on. We we'll just want to make sure that when you do address that, you're on the mic and on the record. Okay. Please carry on. Anyway, no, he said there's a five foot setback to the shed, which when the house, which was built for his parents, um, came before the zoning board. I don't recall anything about a shed being five feet from the property line. That seems very close to me. Um, I did a agree with the 10 foot setback for that house because this is Greg's property here. Mine's here, but my house is up here on the northern border of my property. So that house was down here, so I didn't care too much. But anything less than 10 feet, I'm having a problem with because that's already pretty close to the um, property line. And also with moving his house north, it's gonna bring it up closer to where my house is. Um, as far as, I guess you said the, um, the steps would also be like five feet, or is, or is that wrong? The steps that come out from the grilling porch I don't really have a problem with steps, but if you have like steps or you have a some kind of hardscape that's permanent that gets a variance to be able to be built, can that later be changed to like an actual structure as part of the house? Uh, we're, we're not we're not in the business of offering opinions on interpretation of the ordinance. Just okay, so I just want to know. I, I, our, our sole mission and role here is to determine whether we should grant the application. So that would be a question that you could go over with the town code enforcement officer at a later date or time. It's all referenced within the, the Cape Elizabeth zone. You do ordinance. not interpret? I, I would think that's we, exactly what you're doing. We, we do not interpret um, somewhat random questions from the podium. Uh, what we do is our, we are tasked with, with understanding and determining uh, whether the application merits approval or not. Um, okay, so well, so as far as questions about other provisions within the ordinance and This is part of my concern. Mm -hmm. If it was could later on be changed to a part of the house structure, not just an outside steps or, or whatever, that could be a problem for me. Um, and I also want to clarify what you said, Greg, about the eight feet something from the property line? Is that the max amount that it's going to be from the property line? Ma'am, what, what I'd ask is that uh, we, will, we will have Mr. Sopolis uh, again come to the podium and, and try to answer your questions but, because I think it's only fair okay. uh, that well, we I have an like opportunity to do that. But he needs to be at the podium right. to do that. We can't do that as a back and forth. Okay. I just want to clarify exactly what the setback is going to be on the rear of his house. Sure. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, concerns noted. We appreciate it. And uh, I'll ask uh, our code enforcement officer, Mr. McDougall, to initially speak to that. And then if we need additional um, comment from the applicant, uh, the board will likely permit that. It, there is a porch coming off the rear of the house. And then this, and then the steps come off the porch. The the steps are the closest thing to the rear property line, and they're eight feet from the rear property line. The porch. Hey, which house are you this is this is the proposed. The new house. Yes. yes. This this is the new house. Okay. Do you want to let her know what the existing condition has been? The existing condition is is five feet, I believe, five okay. or five point five feet. And, uh, and the stairs themselves are proposed to be eight feet. The porch is a little bit further away than that. And your concern is that the porch would become permanent living space Possibly. versus a porch? Mm -hmm. Okay. 
Yeah, it, <laughs> this may be appropriate for later, but based on what I'm seeing here, in all conditions around the, the property here, the, the proposed structure is pulling away from the property line. So it will be farther from every property line with, with the exception of the front. So it's proximity to Ocean Avenue. So on the sides, both sides, uh, so north, south, as well as to the west, which is the back of the proposed house, the proposed house is getting farther from the property line. And I'll just, I'll just ask the board, um, I know we've, we've technically have already heard from the applicant, um, based on Mr. McDougall's comments and obviously what the board is observing here and gathering from the application based on, on Michael's comments, do, do we feel the need to hear further expl explanation from Mr. Sopolis on, on uh, the comments that we just heard? Doesn't look like we do. Okay, it sounds as though all of our, our questions and concerns are answered with respect to that. So thank you very much for, for, for your thoughts. Well, I, I'd still like to know what part is going to be... Ma Ma'am, we are still open for public comment. Okay. Uh, but if, you're, if you are going to continue to comment, we, um, I'd ask you to, to step to the mic so that, so that we have a record of that and so that those who may be tuning in from home... Uh, have the opportunity to hear your comments as well. I'd still like to know what part is going to be 5.5 feet or whatever it was from the property line. Can, can she come up and, and have a look at, maybe we can explain yeah, <laughs> to her. I think that's well, Or maybe ben, yeah. Ben's probably the most yeah, right. uh, yeah. capable yeah. So, to explain so to her. Please approach and. Uh, and th this is information that's in the application we, itself. We've so. got the red is existing right. structure and uh, and then the hatching is proposed. So, so there's a porch coming out here, and then the stairs go toward the ocean. And those stairs are eight feet. The porch is a little further away from the property line than the stairs. Uh, so so this is eight feet from the property line to the stairs is what you're saying, or to the porch? The, this is eight feet. Okay, so where's the five feet that Greg mentioned? Right here. The existing structure. That's the existing structure. Oh, the existing structure. Okay, so the new one's not going to be that close. No. no. Okay. And then the rest of this is going to be. The, the rest is all conforming. The, okay. The the only portion that's non-conforming is this small portion on the rear. Okay. The rest of the house is all within the building envelope. Okay. And what what is this setback going to be? Because this is where my house is. 20 feet, 20, 21 feet, I, I believe. Let's see. Yeah, the, the rear the rear setback is, is 20 feet. The conforming setback, well, okay. it's a non-conforming lot. The conforming setback for a non-conforming lot is 20 feet, and he's about maybe a foot or so away from that. So, so the garage is, you know, as he gets closer to your house, he's at least 21 feet from, okay. the, from the property line. Okay, and then line. down here, how much is it? Uh, that looks like 15 okay. feet, right. maybe. You sure? Well, th this dotted line is 20. Okay. So that that looks like maybe four, 14 or 15 feet okay. to that corner of the house. Okay, good. Thank you. You're welcome. Great. And the conversation that just ensued was, uh, was um, specifically referenced to the, the site plan uh, 1 to 10 scale prepared by Peterson Design Group, um, dated June, I believe that's an 8th, June 8th, 2019, uh, which was part of the applicant's submission um, that uh, um, Mr. McDougall and, and um, Leah Butter were just speaking of. Uh, 
again, based on that, based on the further conversation here, uh, is there any concern from the board that we need additional um, opportunity to hear from the applicant based on those issues? Uh, no. Okay. I'm seeing no. Okay. Very good. Is there any further comment from the public? All right. Hearing none, we will close the uh, close this to public comment, and we will proceed with uh, board deliberations. Thoughts on the application? And and I'll I'll just throw it out there. My my initial concern of the application and. And, and maybe I can be talked out of this, is that it seems as though the application is entirely based on a view issue. And I wonder then if, you know, how that relates and applies to the standard of the greatest practical extent uh, conforming to setback requirements. That was just something that, that, that I flagged in, in looking at this quickly. And, um, as a, as a potential issue. But I would say we're not, uh, the applicant isn't increasing his nonconformity, he's decreasing the nonconformity. Whether it's related to a view or not, it seems to be simply decreasing the nonconformity. Mr. Chair, I'll jump in here. Um, just a, a sort of a point of clarification: that the the draft findings of fact, and I know we'll discuss them a little more when we get to them, but it references section 19-4-3.b2, which is relocation. Uh, and I know we've had this discussion before. Does it fall? And does it fall under relocation, or is this reconstruction or replacement? I, I think we're looking at the same exact standards. I just, when we get to the findings of fact, we should just be clear which one we think this falls under. And my opinion would be reconstruction or replacement. But uh, w when it comes to the um, the issue of meeting the setback to the greatest practical extent. Um, I think this is pretty straightforward. I, I think uh, today it's a non-conforming structure. The non-conformity is being reduced, like I said before, on, on the three sides um, where it exists today, where the non-conformity exists today. Uh, could he, could it, uh, the non-conformity be eliminated by lo locating the house uh, slightly differently. We've heard yes, it could, uh, but when you consider uh, views, which is one of the one of the things that we are um, we are to consider in determining whether the relocation meets the setback to the greatest practical extent, it sounds like the proposed plan uh, it, it does so. So he, he's taken views into account, uh, and and where it's proposed. Uh, is in fact a, a better location, it sounds like uh, to me, than, than it would be if, uh, if it were brought completely within the setbacks. So that's my take. And, and I just, just, just a quick um, procedural note, I, I just wanna note that uh, Mr. Sopolis, we did receive your amended uh, replacement structure relocation ZBA request. And that is part of the record. I think that we all have that in front of us. And it looked like it just corrected a, a scrivener's error in the last paragraph, um, crossing out westerly and replace, uh, replacing that with, with northern. So that is that is part of the record and part of our consideration. So just throw that out there is really a point of order. Any further, further points, comments from the board? Well, I, I think I think Michael summed it up well, and despite my you know sort of initial knee-jerk reaction, you know, concerns that this is was, was, is primarily view-driven. It is true. It, it does it does seem to be uh, 
more conforming um, based on the, the application as presented. I agree that that view certainly is a is a, one of the criteria that we have to we have to look at here. Um, usually, we're looking at the impact on views from neighboring properties, but that's the ordinance is not limited to that in any way, shape, or form. Um, so uh, I, I think the the proposed uh, motion, as I'm hearing it, uh, subject to board member making that motion, um, would be to approve the request of uh, Stephen G. Sopolis, owner of the property at 21 Ocean Avenue, map U17, lot 34A, to replace and relocate a single family dwelling based on section 19-4-3B2 of the zoning ordinance. Uh, and to the extent we have to have a conversation about what actual section of the zoning ordinance applies, we can we can certainly do that. Um, so for discussion purposes, uh, what, what are thoughts on, on the proposed motion that has yet to be made? So, so just to, you, you think you read 19-4-4? Uh, I read 19 b 2 yeah. And, and, and that's that's what I that's what what I read off okay, of our draft under, findings. Yes, and that's under relocation. Okay. So that is relocation. I'll make that motion just for. Okay. The point of all right. So yeah. we've been and discussion. Of course, the subject to further discussion sure. amendment. Um, and we have a second. I'll second that. Let's we have a second by Mr. Moser. Uh, all right. So the motion is up for further discussion. Mr. Chair, you know, like I said, I don't think it changes what our analysis at all. But I, to me, it's reconstruction or replacement. Uh, rather than relocation, but I, I'm willing to go either way. Yeah, the board if, if the board's more comfortable, th that's absolutely fine. The, the reason why it was called the relocation is because he was gonna reconstruct just with a permit from me, so what kicked him here was the fact that he wanted to relocate it five feet, but it doesn't matter. Yeah, I, I think it's... The, the standards are the same, right? The standards they are exactly the same. So maybe we reference both provisions? Sure. sure. I don't think that harms us. Um, he, he, he checked both on his application, relocation oh, right. and replacement. Pointing that out, okay. Okay, good. So, so, so the, the, the motion, and, and it sounds like we've got a friendly amendment, and I'll just ask for the board's consent on that. The motion was made pursuant to 1943B2, uh, and uh, my understanding is that the conversation is to amend that to say, it's that our approval is based on section 19-4-3.b2 and 19-4-4b2? No, 3b4. 3b3. 19-4-3b3? B3, yep. Okay, so b2 and b3. So b2 and b3. So the motion to approve would be based on the two sections that we just we just identified. And um, as we're probably in a more formal setting than friendly amendments, so is, is there a motion to amend? So moved. So moved by Michael. Is there a second? Second. Second. Seconded by Aaron. Uh, conversations on the motion to amend the motion. No, con no, no further discussion. All in favor. So to be clear, the pending motion is to approve the request of Stephen G. Sopolis, owner of the property at 21 Ocean Avenue, map U17, lot 34A, to replace and relocate a single family dwelling based on section 19-4-3B2 and B3 of the zoning ordinance. Uh, further discussion on the pending motion. Hearing none, all in favor. That's unanimous. Thank you, Mr. Sopolis. Uh, we, we do need to approve our findings of fact, so that's our, our 
next step here to, to properly uh, wrap up the application, wrap up the approval. Um, proposed finding of fact one, the property is a non-conforming lot in the RA zone. There is an existing single family dwelling on the property that is also non-conforming. Proposed additional findings of fact one, the Zoning Board of Appeals has considered the size of the lot, the slope of the land, the potential for soil erosion, the location of other structures in the property and on adjacent properties, the impact on views, and the type and amount of vegetation to be removed to accomplish the relocation. Proposed additional finding of fact two, the proposed structure will not increase the nonconformity of the existing structure. And proposed additional finding of fact three, the proposed structure is in compliance with the setback requirement to the greatest practical extent. I also added a conclusion that Matt has asked for on the last few of these. He, on the last few, we've added it as a finding, but felt like it was more appropriate as a conclusion, but it's up to you. So, uh, so we would perhaps treat this as a uh, proposed additional finding of fact four that the building and the construction meets the setback to the greatest practical extent based on section 19-4-3.b.2 and three in the zoning ordinance. Yeah, the standards are actually in two, so you'd probably okay, be, you'd okay. probably okay. be clean on that one. Okay, so so that 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 proposed finding four then would only reference 19-4-3.b.2 in the zoning ordinance. Questions, comments, thoughts on the proposed findings? Um, I'd like to entertain a motion to approve the uh, proposed findings of fact and proposed additional findings of fact. So moved. So moved by Aaron. I have some discussion and not, not, not necessarily related to the findings of fact, just something that... Uh, Can we get a quick second? Sorry. Also call in second. Okay, okay. please, carry Great. on. Yeah, thanks. Uh, these, Ben, these lots have been combined and, and we have referenced map U17, lot 34A. Is that, is that the combined lot? Or, or has, believe so. has the ta have the tax maps been updated to? Yeah, you've you've worked with the assessor on that, right? In, in that stream, completed and we combined it to number twenty-one, which is number twenty-one, which is the number of 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 the number so the, the, the question related to whether we were identifying the proper map and lot number based upon the fact that uh, the lots have been combined, the applicant did just confirm that uh, we have referenced the, the proper map and lot number for the combined lots. Is that correct? That is correct. Yes. Okay. Good question. Thanks. Further comments, thoughts, discussions? All right. All in favor of the motion to approve the findings of fact and additional findings of fact. No opposition, the motion carries. Thank you again. Thank you very much. Have a good evening. And uh, that moves us on to adjournment. Uh, having no further business, uh, we will adjourn. Happy July 4th, everybody. Yes.